Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Mr. Charles Boda. Hello. Mr. Steve Porter. Hello. And people that we keep off camera because they have faces for radio. Rhino Clavin and Hello. Craig Williams back there doing I don't know what. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, all right, so in this week's episode, we are going to talk about the best and worst of Walt Disney World for 2017. What we thought the best things were this year and what we thought the worst. And Steve is the official keeper of the list. So starting with... Number five on our worst list, Steve, what do we have? All right. This was kind of the year of bad parents. So we had a number of stories, uh, unfortunate stories. Uh, of We had the lady that strangled the teen because uh, she was standing up during the fireworks. We had the father that was neglecting his son at the resort. with uh, He was drunk and yelling racial, racial, racial slurs. And we had the, uh, the mother that was stealing strollers and using her daughter as an accompl- accomplice. Uh, so it was kind of a year of... Bad parenting. So. Well, I, I think you can take a stroll through the Magic Kingdom any day of the week and see some pretty bad mm-hmm. parenting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, at least these parents made the news. They, they yeah. These they, these guys. Oh, these guys actually got uh, got arrested. Yeah. Um. So that was number five. Uh, I'll go down to number four. We had the road construction all around Walt Disney World. This is actually brought up by Rhino, and it's a good point. I mean, it navigating especially right now. Disney Springs has gotten a little bit better, but it's still kind of crazy. And uh, there's some roads in there that there are places. There, there are p- parts, especially if you're driving at night. Yeah, it's really confusing. And I'm sorry, I th- I think some of it's a little dangerous. Yeah, some mm-hmm. of them, the lane sh- mm-hmm. like the shifts shift. and mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, whoa! I really felt my car. And you know, if someone's not paying attention, that could end badly. So. Yeah, that, it, it's a mess. It's so bad or whatever but uh, when you first get into the park um one of the things that was an issue with some of my friends that came to visit um they for a while they were redirecting people around like the walt disney sign like where you couldn't go actually under and through the sign you had to take another road around it and they were so upset about it like they were losing their mind they're like no we drive through and we wanted to get our like get a picture of us going through in the video of it and then right at last second you redirect around so (laughs) that's fixed now so uh, so that was number four. Uh, number three, we have keeping Disney's Caribbean Beach open throughout all the crazy construction they've had. Um, and this no, one, for the, yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Caribbean Beach is undergoing a massive uh, mm-hmm. rehab, which it needs long overdue rehab. But but in the meantime, it means that their quick service location is in a tent. Uh, it means that they have food trucks outside, um, and some of the resort merchandise is outside. It's kind of a weird street market thing that they have going on that i don't know it it's got to be unfortunate if you're not well informed and you're vacationing for your first time and you just Mm -hmm. you know there is a lot out there that guests staying there should know that information going into it but i can imagine there were some that didn't know there was their first disney world vacation they booked it because it was the cheapest moderate and Mm. then they found themselves you know eating out of a tent so and disney has a real habit they certainly did this with the polynesian when all that massive construction was going on at the Polynesian, there was no pool for months. There was, you know, you literally wake up in the morning and you're hearing, you know, cranes jackhammers and, and cranes and no change in price. No change in price, which boggles my mind. Um, but, yeah, I mean, let's hope that at the end of this rehab, this, that Caribbean is Beach is so reborn Mm-hmm. that it's a must-stay place because it deserves that. It hasn't been that in a very long time. I know our own Kathy Whirling just like cringes every time I say it. But let's be honest, it's in. it has been in very, very bad shape. And this is the kind of construction you have to do when you ignore rehabs for years on end mm-hmm. that clearly need to get done. It, Why it wasn't, I don't know. There must have been a reason. It can't just be apathy. There must have been a reason why mm-hmm. it was allowed to get to the point that, that it got. There. That is kind of the sad thing about this story, though, is that you're right. If Disney had just maintained this resort, it wouldn't have gotten to this wouldn't point. Wouldn't have needed, needed this kind of massive, massive infusion of money and a complete overhaul. So, uh, and Number two, this one's not actually Walt Disney World's fault, but they, did, they actually did a great job in recovering, but... Uh, Hurricane Irma was just an unfortunate thing of the year. Um, you know, disrupted a lot of vacations, uh, closed the parks for a couple days, or was it two days, or just one day? 
Now I don't remember. I don't remember. Two. Was it two? two I'm days. pretty sure it was two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I can imagine this is your once in a lifetime vacation, and Disney World's closed for two the seven days or six days that you're there for. That's got to be really disappointing. So, you know. And the uh, the campgrounds were closed for a bit longer, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. This uh, had a larger impact than just the parks closing for those couple days because you're right. Like the the campgrounds and Disney Cruise Line. Disney Cruise Line had re, uh, the, a lot of the islands, um, but. I mean, it was a tough September for sure for it Disney. It was, World. no question. Um, and and what's the worst thing of 2017, Steve? Uh, Hollywood Studios being empty. See, now I just want to say I disagreed with this in terms of I think this belongs on the list. I think Irma was the worst thing of 2017 personally, but I, just I was outvoted. As much as I think that that's a valid point for the people that were actually here during Irma, Hollywood Studios has been the entire year basically. That's been true. Um, so it's affected more people. That's why I kind of had it at my number one, uh, especially now that great movie rides closed. Uh, is that you know there's like there are you, more bars. Yeah. There are more bars at Hollywood Studios than there are attractions, and again, no change in the price. Mm -hmm. Now they have tried to uh, add some things to make it a little bit more engaging, make uh -huh. it a little bit more um, you know enjoyable, uh, but still. It is half a theme park at best I, right now. I, I know you don't care for movie ride in general, but um, I, I I didn't see it coming at all, but I also wasn't really here. Like, I didn't really work here at the time. I was just a regular guest at Disney. Was there more indications that that ride was going to close? Because I was, was completely a lot of, blindsided yeah, no, there were, by it. There was a lot of rumors okay. in, the, in the months leading up to it, um, especially when they lost the... Uh, Turner Classic Movie mm -hmm. contract. Right. Um, what it was going to be, though, kind of totally took a turn. Like, mm -hmm. there was speculation that it was going to become, it wasn't going to be a great movie ride, but a great musical ride, and it was going to have more Disney movies. And then at D23, like, you know, we were all right. kind of surprised. This, that yeah, this 3D attraction. Uh, Mickey and uh, Minnie uh, Runaway Rail Railway, Ray, yeah, or whatever it's a, it's it is. A, yeah. So it's, a, it's a, a Mickey and Minnie cartoon in 3D that is not going to require... 3D glasses. 3D glasses. Yeah. Mm. So um, it's going to be some very interesting technology, I guess, along the lines of what Nintendo did with the 3DS and some other things. Uh, but um, I yeah. think for some, this is, I know you're, again, you're not the biggest great movie ride fan, but for some, this is like an iconic attraction. See, I loved, like I used to love the great movie ride until it became just forgotten about. And you know, nothing was changed. Nothing was updated. Mm -hmm. It was old. It was worn out. It needed something. If they had just gone through and really refreshed everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would, uh, that I could have gotten behind. Um, or, you know, let's add something. Let's change some things around. I think the well, theme of the great movie ride was wonderful. And this was a must for many years. Hmm. That was a must-do attraction for me. So it wasn't that I just hated the great movie ride. I hated what the great movie ride became. Do you know what is really interesting is now that they've just acquired 21st Century Fox. Uh, they haven't acquired it yet. Well, they they're, want they're to. attempting to they want acquire to. 21st Century Fox. It would. I wonder if they had known that that was in their future and in trying to attempt that if they would have been so quick to close the great movie ride now that they're going to have so many more IPs in the movies but i don't know well we don't know but don't. i think another issue with what hollywood studios is right now i mean it's a thing of and that i was trying to explain to people when the frozen ride was being built cuz i knew a lot of people that were like oh who like i didn't care about the maelstrom ride anyway which i know a lot of people loved that ride but the problem is that having something like the maelstrom took takes pressure off the other rides when there's not that many rides so if there's a 30 minute wait that's 30 minutes worth of people that are at the maelstrom that are not at soren that are not at test track that are not in these other places so with hollywood studios being the way it is when there's not the backlot tour or you know it's a, that's a smaller attraction but it does draw some people um that puts way more lines on toy story mania on rock and roller coaster on tower of terror so it just <laughs> makes your ride times that much longer because there's just less places for people to go and then also with like where people walk there they have lots of uh, barricades up i mean there's sometimes i'm in that park and like you can't get through 
certain areas to get somewhere and you just hit a wall and you're like, okay, I guess I got to turn around and walk to the other side and get, you got to walk all the way around now to everywhere. So it's just really frustrating of a park right now. Do we think, uh, given the fact that uh, it's rumored that uh, Toy Story Land is going to open in the summer of 2018, do we think Hollywood Studios will make the jump at the end of next year from being on our worst list to being on our best? Possible, very possible. Uh, I think I, that's certainly going to be the case in 2019 when Star Wars opens. Yeah, yeah that will but definitely. I think it will be. You do you know, think Toy Story Land is going to be enough? I don't I think don't so. To ba- based on the pictures, I really, I was kind of. I mean, it's not open yet, so I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I don't know that I'm that excited about the prospects of it because it does. It almost seems comparable to like what the uh, the Bugs Land is in California Adventures Park, and that's definitely not enough of a draw. I love the idea of Toy Story, and I like Toy Story and everything. It just doesn't – they're not doing anything that immediately jumped out to me as like, oh, my God, I need to do that. Like, I'd like to see the Slinky Dog coaster and stuff, but it's not – I'm sure I'll ride it and then be like, okay, I did that. Like I, everything, so. I think back to your point, just helping the entire park once it's open, it'll free up that many it more will. people for all the other attractions yeah. that are already existing. So for that, for that, I, I am very excited. Mm-hmm. And uh, we added a, an honorable mention uh, to our worst list. And uh, what was that, Steve? We had uh, Planet Hollywood remaining open and opening back up uh, at Disney Springs. This is one that we all kind of joked about, but it's kind of true. No yeah. one's, you know, why don't they just keep that thing closed? I don't know. So not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah, definitely not a fan. Charles, well, not a fan. Uh, I, uh, I am. Even though you are the mayor of Flavorton? <laughs> yeah, um, I I did order the mayor of Flavortown, um, and I was very disappointed. I was disappointed in every single part of that restaurant. Well, what I, I actually want to go back just because sometimes yeah, I it's didn't that think it was that fun. bad. So, it, it's that fun for me to criticize stuff sometimes. So like, I actually like it in a little bit. For me, it's not that it's the worst place ever. I mean, it's not made the worst, our worst list, but it's not that it's the worst place ever. It's just, to me, it's like the electric umbrella of Disney Springs and that there's so many other great places at, you know, Disney Springs or mm-hmm. if you're comparing it to uh, Electric Umbrella at World Showcase and Epcot that, you know, why would you go to Planet Hollywood when you can go to Homecoming or, you know, uh, you know, Deluxe Burger even? Or, you know, there's so many other great options that I just don't see the point. Yeah. All right, so let's head over to our best list, the best of 2017, starting with number five. Steve. Number five, this was the first year of Festival of the Arts. And I think, you know, everyone loves festivals at Epcot. Um, and having the first one was kind of exciting. I think, you know, probably in 10, 15 years from now, it'll be kind of cool to say that I went to the first Festival of the Arts. I don't know, that was just me. But mm. um, I thought it, they did a good job in its first year. I know a lot of people were saying that they want more. Uh, more things to do, more booths, more this and that uh, in you know, the future years. But I think for its first year, it has really good ground to, to start building from. Uh, and I'm excited to see what they have this year. So, Yeah, no, same. I, uh, I, I actually really liked it. I didn't realize since I didn't work here when it came out the first time or whatever I you know it was something I went to anyway just to enjoy it and I didn't even know what was going on because I don't feel like it was that heavily advertised which is very different now like you know being in the world of this compared to not like I would just casually go to the park and I'm like oh this is happening and um so it was um you know, they had lots of food items that related to it. Like, they had a giant, like, cookie that was supposed to be, like, a painting, you know, the thing they put their thumb through, and then there's paints on it. So they had, like, colored food gels that you could eat, and they gave you a paintbrush, like a edible brush thing or whatever that came with it. So there was that kind of thing. Um, they had um, giant portraits like life-size portraits where you would get in them like washington crossing the delaware and it'd be like you and your family in place of the it's a great picture of photo booth, uh so. cory julie and the kids uh doing that one mm-hmm. yeah so it's like really neat like photo opportunities the lines weren't long for it at all i mean that might change as it gets more popular but i mean any picture that i wanted i was able to pretty much just walk right up to it so and get photos so it was really well done yeah i'm excited uh, number four, uh, the improvements in security this year. So they've kind of, especially at the Magic Kingdom, they've taken where the security bag checks are and they've moved it back to at the TTC and at the monorail resorts and back towards the bus station. Um, so it kind of pulls it back away from the Magic Kingdom a little bit. And 
I think we've all kind of said that, you know, it, it improves the lines and it also improves the theming of the Magic Kingdom. So this is a big improvement. Uh, Say improvement one more time. It was a big improvement. <laughs> um, it was. I, I think that the way they have done this and implemented it was genius. It has, I, I find that the security screening procedures are not intrusive at all. Um, even when you've got to go through the metal detectors, they really have it as, as, as organized as possible. Um, and I'll say that, you know, my experience has been they've been fairly thorough mm-hmm. yeah. in checking bags and making mm-hmm. sure that, you know, it's not just the cursory check it was at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, there's a lowered stress when you're getting it out of the way early. Yeah. Where, like, you know, if the, the other day we were at the Contemporary before getting on the monorail um, and security's done. And I can just get off the monorail, walk into the parks mm-hmm. and that entire thing, bag unzipped, go through it all there. And then, yeah, like we mentioned with the theming, the park immersion doesn't have that little air of bureaucracy towards it. Of having right. to get I, stuff done. I've also no- noticed that the lines compared to when they were all at the front are mm-hmm. a lot more manageable now because you're, mm-hmm. you know, dividing it up in all these different places that you don't have it all come together all at once mm-hmm. and have those huge, huge lines. So. Which, I mean, also, I mean, it was something I just thought of as another perspective. It does make things even safer mm-hmm. now being on that end because, I mean, with how things are, I, it you know, if somebody was, for instance, you know, to bring a gun to shoot people or whatever. I mean, if you're stuck on the ferry boat or you're stuck on the monorail, like you can't go anywhere, like you're stuck or whatever. And there was no security at all from that end of it. Yeah, when you get to Magic Kingdom, oh, I thought it was like black and white for some reason. Oh, they on the screen, I don't know what happened. But um, so if you're all like at Magic Kingdom, yeah, you're blocked from going in, but that whole lead up, I mean, there's hundreds of people on the boats and on the monorails and everything going over there. And that was a very easy access to do whatever yeah. to somebody so and people people want both parts of the process they want easy access mm-hmm. but they also want to feel safe mm-hmm. and if you can find a compromise like they managed to to make you feel secure but also not make it feel like this painful slog right before you go in yeah like they managed to find a balance with it mm-hmm. so it's a lot more comfortable going in now all right number three uh the happily ever fire happily ever after fireworks so you know the new fireworks show added to the magic kingdom this year it's a lot longer show there's a lot more uh pyrotechnics involved um and there's projections added so wishes didn't have those same type of projections that uh still think wishes is better really i mean i like it i like to have happily ever after but i still think wishes was better do you think if you really think about it do you think any of that is nostalgia though of course, some of it is, but some of it is also having watched the shows from a distance, not in the park. Happily Ever After really is a show that you need to kind of watch from the park. Mm-hmm. It doesn't translate as well when you're up in the California Grill or over on the beach at the Poly. Um, so for that reason alone, I felt that because, you know, Wishes... It played great no matter where you were. Um, and I also thought Wishes was genius. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant, beautiful I, story, music, fireworks, all of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm right with you in thinking that it was beautiful and I loved it. And it reminds me of my college program, so I love Wishes. But I just think that for me, when I look at Happily Ever After, I just see a better show <laughs> when I'm on main street and I I do get your point though, that, you know, if you're up at California grill, it might be a different experience, but when you're on main street, you're getting a better experience than you did with wishes. I don't, I mean, that's just me, but yeah, the first time I saw that show actually was from the Polynesian in one of the rooms and I hadn't gotten to see it yet. So when I saw it from there, I was like, like I was like it's okay but I was like I liked Wishes better when I got to see it in front of the castle I was like oh this is a whole nother ball game to like be right there looking at it so I do completely agree with his point about like it's not a show you really can get nearly as much out of from California Grill or the Polynesian or anything but I don't I, I, I love it and I think it's great and they really stepped it up in a lot of ways I don't like a lot of their song choices as really? much as Wishes. I love. I just don't think there's as much variety as Wishes had. Oh. Um, and it's not because it's like newer stuff. It's more so because like they do a lot of covers of things. And I'm like, but it's Disney. They own the rights. Like they could do the original versions of them. I just don't see what the need for 
that was the other thing that I love about Happily Ever After. Yeah, I love true. that they have songs that they don't feature. You know, there's, um, you know, songs from the Disney Renaissance that kind of can sometimes be forgotten mm-hmm. about. That they, you know, mm-hmm. go the distance. For instance, you don't oh, see yeah. a lot of Hercules presence in the parks anymore. So when songs like that are in Happily Ever After, I'm like, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for you know nostalgia of the 90s but mm. i don't know if that was just me yeah no I, I i completely agree on that i mean hercules and hunchback are my, my two favorite movies so i was thrilled to see both of those there but it was just because it kind of cut out and it really wasn't until i went with my mother or whatever it had kind of cut out like snow white cinderella sleeping beauty era of everything and there really isn't anything before the 90s with the exception of the jungle book was really the only hit in there from before or whatever so when i went with them i was like oh right i didn't even think about that so interesting uh number two uh we'll move on to uh the opening of pandora and also that leads into the fact that uh animal kingdom became a nighttime park this year so uh yeah pandora opened this year one of probably the best attraction at walt disney world flight of passage is now open what do you think tops flight of passage nothing 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 is it one of the best? It is the best attraction, in my opinion, <laughs> yeah, okay, at okay. Walt Disney World. I think it is the best attraction at uh, on either coast. Um, I haven't done all the attractions at all the theme parks in the world. So I don't know. I can't say best in the world. But if it's not, it's really, really, really close. And if there's a list of the best attractions in the world, this has got to be on the top three. So, um, And Pandora has been a huge success for Disney. And I just want to point out, that for years, the belly aching that went on in the Disney fan. Oh, I don't like Avatar. I can't. I don't, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, look at it now. Doing well. Doing great. Doing great. And lines for Flight of Passage routinely three hours long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this is months after it opened. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's, you know, super long lines. And uh, it also, like I, I mentioned before, this this lend into the bioluminescence needing to be a nighttime park now. So, Mm -hmm. you know, now we have uh, Rivers of Light. That wasn't really included in the best because it's kind of been a dud. But, um, you know, it is another nighttime spectacular. And also uh, the nighttime safari, which Mm -hmm. I actually got got to do that uh, two weeks ago or something like a week ago or something like that. Um, And we had the the, the, uh, safari to ourselves. We were the only, me and Michaela, my wife, were the only ones on the the um, safari so that oh. was awesome yeah there's also that tree show at night too where the animals come to life and yeah they're on the tree i mean that's you know another addition to make it nighttime and now they all i mean they may have before but they have lots of like dance stations like where they'll have a little area almost over by like the Di- dino usa or whatever it's called um that's got like a uh, a Brazilian theme? I don't know what the theme would be, but it's some kind of dance club thing that's over there now, like a dance party. So, Well, and that's what's so cool about this being a nighttime park now is because for those who don't have the park hopper ticket and they just have the base ticket, um, their day's not over at 5 o'clock now. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's kind of cool. So, And the first complaint that whenever anybody talks about Animal Kingdom is the heat. Mm-hmm. So now you can go when it's less hot. Sure. So, yeah, good point. Go. Um, and then number one, there's a lot to unpack here, but number one was all the announcements from D20, the D23 Expo. No question. So, you know, Star Wars Land, or the Star Wars Hotel, the detail, more details on Star Wars Land, the gondolas, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratatouille, the Space Restaurant, uh, the new mission to Mission Space. I'm probably forgetting some, but, you know, there are so many cool announcements. And I know that, I, I know that my producer gets very upset every time I say this. But in my opinion, uh, the reason, one of the reasons this belongs uh, at the top of the best list for 2017 was that, it, I, I, and I think I'll, this, I'll be borne out on this five years from now, uh, this was the year Disney, uh, Disney ended the competition with Universal. Um, when this all comes to play, when this all comes into fruition, when we have the Star Wars Hotel and Star Wars Land is open and the gondolas and Guardian of the Galaxy and Ratatouille and everything else, I don't think there is anything Universal can do to counter it. Um, when you add in the fact, should the 21st Century Fox deal go through, the amount of intellectual property they will have access to that they don't have access to right now. Uh, just take a look at what they've done with Star Wars, Marvel, um, 
uh, Pixar. It's insane. So I think this will, I think 2017, and I'm not, I'm not rooting against Universal. I love Universal. I think they have done amazing things. I think they're going to continue to do amazing things. I think any possibility, because there was a while there I was starting to think, you know what, if this trajectory keeps going the way it's going, I could see 10 years from now Universal unseating Disney mm -hmm. as the preeminent player in Orlando. Uh, I no longer feel that at all. I don't think there's any possibility of it at least not within the next decade. Um, so I think at D23, that was little, I think that was one of the first things um, I said after the announcements at D23 was I, the, the competition with Universal just ended. Well, I don't know if I necessarily agree to that well, extent. Well, because apparently you agree with me on nothing. <laughs> no, I, I do agree to some extent. This felt, this definitely felt like an attack on what Universal was doing. It's like, this was them saying enough is enough. Yeah, let, let's shut them up. And I don't, let's see how that works. That's what I think the difference is. I think we need to see how this plays out before I make that judgment. But I think that it's very well, you very well could be. Right. Well, I think my track record's pretty good. Yeah, my I'm, track record on these on these calls have been pretty good. So, um, just taking a look at it from a purely logistical standpoint, um, the IP Disney has, the resources they have to develop it, um, the current position they already hold, where they are. I mean, let's let's be honest. You know, Universal generously is twenty percent of the market here. Disney's the other 80. So to get that to switch, to get it to a 51-49 scenario is going to take a Herculean effort on the part of Universal and would require an awful lot of absolute abject failures on the part of Disney for that to happen. Now, when Disney was like running into walls and couldn't seem to find out where, the, where like the, they couldn't put their pants on in the morning... Um, I'm like, oh, okay, this has been going on for a while. Universal's getting aggressive with Comcast having taken over, giving them deep pockets, putting billions and billions into development. And then Disney does this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And they are moving at lightning speed to get this stuff built. Yeah, that's and that's the biggest difference. We are going to see all of this in the next three years. All of it. Everything that was announced, pretty much. Which yeah. At D23 will be a reality within the next three to four years. Which is kind of the craziest part considering how long it took them to build those parking garages at Disney Springs. The 18 oh month God. parking garage, the seven years it took to build a, a Pandora. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, you know. It was getting. This is what I'm, when I say they, 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 they couldn't find their pants in the morning. Um, but they have now found their pants but, and no, they but... have found their running shoes and they are out. Work, work in this, and I think by the time this is done, Universal is going... Now, look, I'm not saying Universal's out. Universal's going to do some stuff, but I think the pressure is on them right now. I am stunned they still have not announced a, a third gate. Yeah. And so, I'm, I'm saying third gate because Volcano Bay is not a theme park. Yeah, it's, it's a water a park. park. Um, and marketing be damned. But... Um, you know, let's see. They may come up with the most incredible idea for a fourth gate, a third gate, and you know we're back in the running here. I don't think that's going to happen. No. I think that I don't think Universal is going to be able. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, they have Harry Potter." Yeah, well, Harry Potter's run its course. Star Wars has just been re re reinvented. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's no sign that's going to. That, that that's going to slow down anytime soon. Um, so I don't know. It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Kind of crazy, but all right. So there you have it. Our best and worst for 2017, um, the year of bad on our worst list, the year of bad parents, road construction around Walt Disney World, keeping the Caribbean Beach Resort open in spite of the incredible construction going on there. Hurricane Irma and Hollywood Studios being empty with an honorable mention to Planet Hollywood remaining open, remaining a thing that exists in the world. On our best list, number five, uh, the first year for Festival of the Arts at Epcot, number four, improvement and security at the theme parks. Number three, the happily ever after fireworks at the Magic Kingdom. Number two, the opening of Pandora and Animal Kingdom. 
becoming a nighttime park in the process. And number one, uh, the D23 Expo and all the announcements that were made, but we did not mention the honorable mention for uh, the best list, which was the uh, the advent of mobile ordering for the food mm-hmm. uh, at the quick service locations. Yeah, they uh, they announced that with, I think, Satu Lee Canteen was the first one mm-hmm. to have yep. it, uh, with uh, once Pandora opened, and it just spread from quick service to quick service, and it's really efficient. It cuts down on the lines and is a great addition. So, mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right, so there you have it, folks. That's our best and worst for 2017. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with the final episode of the best and worst of Walt Disney World for 2017. And uh, have a great week.